Why is there no sound in this clip? Hey, what's up? I'm Michael. For whatever reason, the audio didn't record when I recorded this first clip, so I'm just going to do voiceover for it instead of starting over again. One thing that I noticed when I was working on my most recent cover of Dave's theme from Maniac Mansion is that I found it a little bit easier to transcribe it at the beginning because the beginning of it is in a Mixolydian mode. What is a mode? I thought this is an interesting moment to talk about what a mode is, and it's related to a scale. So what's a scale? A scale is any consecutive series of notes that form a progression between one note and its octave. We typically talk about this in terms of major and minor scales, but the modes are something that's very similar. And I think there's an interesting way to look at modes. So we're used to seeing a circle divided into 12, not only like on a clock face in our usual life. But in music, we're used to seeing this as a circle of fifths. We're going to treat this slightly differently than a circle of fifths. We're just going to be looking at this as all of the pitches in chromatic order around a circle. Now, there's this concept called maximal evenness. And this is sort of like if you get into an elevator with a bunch of strangers, people you don't know, everyone will tend to basically evenly space themselves out in the space so that everyone has roughly the same amount of space. There are other things in nature that also tend to evenly space out. Think about liquid in a container finding equilibrium. As long as it's being held level to gravity, the liquid won't be thicker, higher up the container in one spot than another. It evens out. If we spatially look at all of the pitches of a scale like this, we can think about how they would be evenly spaced out in this space as well. So one way by putting little dots to help me keep track of what's where. So if we have one pitch in a space, that's just a single pitch. It's dividing the chromatic scale into just one part. Now, if we have a second pitch, where would that go? A second pitch would go here on F sharp or G flat. Now this creates a tritone, but it's evenly separating the scale. If we add a third pitch, what do we get? Now our three pitches are C, E, and G sharp. This is evenly separating that chromatic scale into three parts, and it creates an augmented triad. What if we add one more? Now we have four evenly spaced out pitches, and we get a fully diminished seventh chord. Now, if we were saying this is a fully diminished seventh chord, we would normally spell this as B double flat instead of A, but we're thinking in enharmonics for right now. What if we have one more pitch? Things start to get more interesting. Here, there's no way for it to be exactly perfect, but what we end up with is a pentatonic scale, five pitch scale. They're roughly as even as they could be. There are two spots where there are two spaces between, but everywhere else there's just one space between, as even as it can be. Then, what if we add another? Here we get a whole tone scale. Those are the maximally even distributions with up to six pitches. There's another one that is still balanced, but not exactly maximally even. That's the hexatonic scale. It's not super commonly used, but it's something that I used in my dissertation, and I really like it because it allows you to use triads that you wouldn't be able to use in many of these other scales. But the real question is what happens when you've got seven? This is one possible maximally even distribution of seven pitches. And we get a major scale. But what happens if we start somewhere other than C? Then we get that's still maximally even, but it doesn't have that same feel of reaching home at the end. To some extent, every time you're working with something, you what you start and end at will sound like home. But the reason that the C major scale, or any other major scale if we transposed it in such a way, feels like we're arriving at home is that right there. That half step really feels like we're pushing up to home. But there's another half step here. The thing that every major scale has is something called a key defining tritone. That tritone between F and B, it has energy to it. It wants to go somewhere. B 
wants to go up to C and F wants to fall down to E. That's the key to finding tritone. If you're hearing intervals in a key, if you hear that tritone and you know it's a major key, you're going to want it to go there. So we talked about starting in other places. What happens when we do start on D and go D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D? It doesn't have that key defining tritone anymore, but we can still make it sound like home. This is what's known as a mode. This pattern of whole steps and half steps, that's the same pattern as the major scale just starting on the second pitch. So we've got whole, half, whole, 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 half, whole to create the Dorian mode. If we start on E, we get a different mode. That is the Phrygian mode. Then if we start on F, that is the Lydian mode. If we start on G, That is the Mixolydian mode that I was talking about at the start of the video. If we start on A, that is the natural minor scale. Or if we're talking about modes, that is the Aeolian mode. And then we've got everyone's favorite, the one that happens when you start on the seventh scale degree of a major scale. The Locrian mode. But you can also talk about this scale starting on C as an Ionian mode. I have not really seen a reason to call it that. If anyone knows better, please let me know in the comments. So how do we characterize these modes? Three of them sound essentially like major scales. Coincidentally, those are the three triads that are naturally occurring in C major that are major triads. If we use this key signature of no sharps and no flats, those three modes are also the ones that are essentially major modes. The reason we call them that is the third scale degree. So if we're starting from C, C, D, E, that's a major third, so we call it a major mode. Same with F. That's a major third, so we call it a major mode. And from G, another major third, so we call it a major mode. The difference in the Lydian starting on F and the Mixolydian starting on G, there's one pitch that's different in each of them. So with the Lydian, it's this B. If we were in F major, this would be B flat. That Do, Re, Mi, Fi, that raised fourth scale degree, is what makes this a Lydian mode. So the Lydian mode is essentially a major scale with a raised fourth scale degree. From G, it's that F this time. If we were in G major, that would be F sharp. So the Mixolydian mode is like a major scale with a lowered seventh scale degree. In the cover of Dave's theme. This was really useful. So let's pretend that Dave's theme is in G. It's not, it's an A, but if it is in G, Mixolydian, what was useful for that is the ability to go to a major seven chord built on that lower seventh scale degree, which is really what Dave's theme is based on. The major part of Dave's theme is really just two chords alternating, and it's one and a major seven chord built on the lowered seventh scale degree. What are the minor modes? The minor modes are everything else. Like the major modes, the minor modes are called that because they have a minor third at the beginning. So from D, that D to F is a minor third, so it's a minor mode. The Dorian mode is essentially a minor scale with one pitch changed. What is that pitch? It's this B, the sixth scale degree of the Dorian mode is raised. If this were D minor, that would be a B flat and not a B. So here's D minor. And here's D Dorian. They're very subtly different. Then we've got E. This one's a little bit easier to hear. This is what the Phrygian mode starts like sounding on E. So once again, it's a minor mode because it's that minor third from the root. What's different about the Phrygian mode compared to the minor scale? The second scale degree. In a minor scale, you'd normally have E 
F sharp G, but here in the Phrygian, it's E, F natural G. Moving on to A, this is again the natural minor scale. So we can sort of skip that one because now we can get to the most interesting one, the Locrian mode. What's different about this one compared to a normal minor scale? Even just playing it like that, I feel that I want it to go here and end there. That's just that key defining tritone at work there. But what's different about the Locrian mode? Two things are different. The second scale degree is lowered, like in the Phrygian mode, but the more shocking, I guess, difference is the fifth scale degree is a tritone. It's also lowered. In B minor, we would normally have B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, a, B, but Locrian instead. We've got that tritone between one and five, which makes it feel very unstable. With all of this information in mind, we can also tackle another question. What is a key? A key is a collection of pitches with some options in later music. So we were talking about C major for a while. But if we were just talking about C without the word major, just something is in C. Most people are going to automatically think C major, but C minor is also an option. So if we're saying that something is in C, we can think of all of the pitches that are in both C major and C minor as options. So that gives us A lot of options. A composer, especially after the common practice period, will use those pitches sort of interchangeably when they want a certain mood at a certain moment, if they're still thinking in tonal sense, if they're still a tonal composer. But you can also use the things that come from the modes, like the lowered second scale degree of Phrygian and Locrian. If you want that move, that, that feeling, especially if you're coming down, that half step falling at the end helps it really feel like it's dragging you down. So all of these modes can be used in that way. And really, nowadays, most of the time when someone is composing something, they're not only using one of these modes. For instance, they might be focusing on Lydian if they want that, that really bright ascending feeling to happen there. But they're probably not going to only use that mode. They'll use other things as well, depending on what they want the music to do at any moment. For instance, there's the song Lydia by Fauré. That is all in the Lydian mode. But the fourth scale degree at its normal major feeling comes back as well, not raised. The other thing that is interesting about Dave's theme is that it uses a lot of pitches from the blues scale. And that's a topic for another video that would require a little bit more research for me because I am not trained in blues or jazz theory, but it's super interesting. But if you want to see a really good discussion about some blues scales included in a video, check out 8-Bit Music Theory. There are also videos on that channel that go into deep dives into all of the modes that I talked about in this video. So if you're interested in learning more, I recommend going there. Those videos are always great. Great. That should be about it for today. Thanks everybody for watching. If you have any questions about scales and modes or maximal evenness, let me know in the comments below. I might not be able to answer all of your questions because I'm not super versed in the highly theoretical side of music theory, but there's some cool stuff in there. Please give this video a like if you liked it or give it a pity like anyway if you didn't like it. It's not gonna hurt you. Two, this side is a video that YouTube thinks you might like, so please check that out if you're interested. Up there in the corner is a link to our channel where we mostly talk about media, especially video games and music, with reviews and reminiscences and the like. But we talk about some other stuff here and there too. If you're interested in that sort of thing, please subscribe. I think you might enjoy learning about some other things that we love. That's about it for today. Maintain your groovy selves.